Have you been experiencing internal financial struggles triggered by economic concerns? Are you feeling capped at your current income level and can't seem to realize your financial potential? Energy healer Gene Border has created an emotional freedom technique, or EFT, tapping protocol to help calm the inner voice that keeps you stressed. Claim your free copy at geneborder.com slash vow and say goodbye to those financial blockages. Welcome to another episode of the Focused Practical Dreamers Journey podcast, Energy Work to Better Your Business, hosted by energy healer Gene Border. It's not just about dreaming, it's about making those dreams a practical reality. Subscribe to us via your favorite network by visiting our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com. Now, get ready, your journey to success starts here. Hi, everyone. It's your host, Jean Border, with another great episode of the Focus Practical Dreamers Journey podcast, where we talk everything energy, mindset, psychology to help you better your business. I have a special guest with me here today, which is James I. Bond, and we're going to talk about hmm, the brain. But before we get to that, I want to remind everybody. There's a link below, geneborder.com slash vow. For those of you who are having some tension or stress around financial issues, money decisions, money scarcity maybe, or just the economic situation that you find yourself in right now, there's some EFT tapping protocols in the PDF. Just click on the link, open it up. There's instructions if you've never done it before, but if you have, just tap along with a protocol. It'll calm down your nervous system. You can make financial decisions from a place of calm rather than a place of fear or reaction. Okay? The link's down below, geneborder.com slash bow. And now we're going to have a fun conversation with James I. Bond. Not James Bond, even though that would be so cool too. Talk to me about the brain, James. How are you? Nice to have you here. Hi, Gene. Thank you for having me. Your your podcast is so awesome, huh? especially for business owners or people who are thinking of getting into business. And, um, you know, I do a lot of work with the U.S. Small Business Administration where I do uh, uh, webinars and seminars. Uh, and uh, for people who are your audience uh, type people, you know, they're they they're thinking of getting into business or they got into business and they kind of want help. And I think that, you know, we get this idea that it's so easy, but there's things that you have to do that are, you know, for some people it's easy and for some people it isn't. But uh, I, it's fun because I figured out this thing uh, that's changed my life called Brain Glue. I actually have a book called Brain Glue where you simplify how you make money by simplifying how you describe what your product or service is or the name of it. And it's just amazing how many people don't understand the importance of uh, choosing the right name. I have this woman, she's got this uh, program for uh, women over 50, uh, and uh, she calls it elderly. And I said, women over 50 don't want to be called elderly. You know, and I, as I was talking with her, she was said, well, it's like postmenopausal women and we've gone through a change because of that. I said, yeah, well, my wife is postmenopausal. If you said elderly women and never in a hundred years would she listen to you. I'm not elderly. What does that mean? How even though she's old, <laughs> I'm old. But uh, if you said for postmenopausal women, I have this process that I think would really help you because of da -da 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 -da, you'd get my wife and other women going like, oh, okay, and they're interested. And so I, I learned this whole process that the words we choose in some cases can turn a product into a blockbuster of success. And there are so many examples I have that people are just floored by it. Oh yeah, I never thought of that. Oh, you know, you know, uh, it's just, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. I'll share some of those with you here because I think you'll really enjoy it. And I think your audience will. Cool. So how did you get into this world? Ah, okay. <laughs> my mother. No, sorry. That's how I got it. That's how it really got into the world. My mom. <laughs> okay. How did you get into the business world where you are okay. now? Oh, maybe a little bit more. Okay. I'm originally from Montreal, Canada. Uh, in fact, we have a son and three daughters, and our middle daughter, we named her, we give her the initials L-A, Lauren Asia, A-J-A. 
And so I know that uh, people say, how long have you been in Southern California? Well, how old's Lauren again? Okay, she's 37. So we've been here for 37 years. But when I was in Montreal, I worked my way up. I had an advertising company and I worked my way up and eventually won major clients like Kraft Foods, Timex Watches, Abbott Laboratories, Seagram's, our world headquarters is in Montreal. Even though I don't drink, it's like I won Seagram's. It was really funny. <laughs> um, but... Um, and so they they coached me and said, you know, you're so good at what you do. You know, I do logical selling. You're so good at what you do that uh, they gave me an opportunity to win the anti-drug campaign in America. And I came up with powerful, logical reasons why you should not do drugs. And, uh, you know, they loved the campaign until they saw the ad that they wanted. And then when I saw the ad that, that beat us, two things happened. The first one is I realized this is infinitely more powerful than anything I know how to, that than my ad, the ad that I created with logical reasons why you shouldn't do drugs. Uh, and then second is this was emotional selling, not logic. And so let me tell you what the ad was. And I think everybody out there who's ever seen it or heard it knows this ad. It's a guy holding an egg saying, this is your brain, cracking a shell and dropping the egg into a sizzling frying pan. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And when I saw the ad, I knew that it was infinitely more powerful than my logical reasons why you shouldn't do drug, drugs. But the second one was, yeah, I mean, this is emotional selling. They don't teach emotional selling in school. They teach logic, you know, features and benefits. You know, I mean, just, you know, tell them logic. And this was not logical. There was emotion. And it scared me. But it also the scientist in me came out and I said, you know, I, I did some research in, in, you know, in the library and at school and stuff like that, and nobody seemed to know how to do emotional selling. And so I said, you know what? Let me create a passion box. Let me put a box right next to my computer, and every time I see an ad or hear something that's emotionally powerful, instead of, uh, you know, instead of um, trying to guess how they did it, let me write it on a three by five card, like your brain on drugs, so I'd remember that, or tear a, a page out of a magazine and put it into this passion box in the hopes that eventually I'd have so many examples that I could figure out like how emotional selling works. So about 10 years later, a little more than 10 years later, we had moved to Southern California. I met John Gray and John Gray was telling about a book he wrote and how frustrated he was. He wrote a book called Men, Women and Relationships. And people who read the book said, oh my gosh, this is this is profound. This is the best relationship book I've ever read. This is so good and everything else. But almost nobody was buying his book. <laughs> so he was, he actually was doing seminars to try to promote the book. He was telling me about this. And he said he did a seminar. And in a seminar, he said one thing. And all these women started laughing who were in the, in the seminar. All the men looked at the women like, what are you laughing at? What's so funny about what he said? And then so one of the women said, uh, so, he, so he said, you see, there are certain things that women laugh at and can relate to and men can't. And there are certain things that men laugh at and relate to and women can't. And there are certain things that we all laugh at. And one of the women in the audience said, it's almost like men are from a different planet. What planet do you think men are from? And he goes, I guess men are from Mars. And everybody started laughing. So he's telling me when he got home, he's thinking, so if men are from Mars, where are women from? Well, women are from Venus. Venus is the god of love. Okay. Huh. What happens if I change the title of the book to men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and then have the same book, but just put references to it throughout the, throughout the book, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, da, 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 so people can see how it relates. What do you think happened? Almost overnight, half a million books got sold. Half a million. He went from like almost nothing to suddenly people are buying it like crazy, and a million and two million. Eventually, guess how many he sold? 50 million books. He went from 20,000 to 50 million books sold, all because he changed the title. So when I got home, I took the book, because I had a copy of the book, and I was going to put it in my passion box. And I said, wait a second. Men aren't from a different planet. You know, I mean, I know a lot of women out there. I think you probably can relate to we are. I'm not See, saying man. a word. I'm not saying a word. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> But it, but it's not. But it's a metaphor, you know. It's it's like you know. It, he he's basically saying men are so different from women in some ways that it's almost like we're from a different planet, and it's a metaphor. 
And so I, I suddenly go, wait a second, is metaphor the secret to an emotion, emotional selling, or at least one of the secrets? Then I realized this is your egg, this is your brain. He wasn't holding a brain, he was holding an egg. And then he dropped it in a sizzling frying pan and said, this is your brain on drugs. That's a metaphor too. You know, they're probably sitting around a table and thinking, okay, so we have to create an ad for this. What happens when you take drugs? Well, it fries your brain. Hmm, what else gets fried? An egg. Why don't we have an egg in a sizzling frying pan and say, there's your brain, <laughs> you know? And that's how they can So I'm thinking like, oh, wow, if I just figured out emotional selling. So I took the passion box and I dumped it on my bed and I discovered that um, a metaphors is one of 14 brain triggers at the heart of emotional selling. I thought my brain was going to explode. And I had clients. I worked as a consultant. I had lots of clients. So I get to practice on clients, okay? Usually we do 80-20. 80% of the stuff we do, we know works, and 20% are experiments. Hey, I kind of heard this, or I have this idea, I'd like to try it with you guys. If it doesn't work, at least we tried it on them, but we still help them. And I remember the, the second client I worked with, so I had an opportunity to try this on them, were three guys who, after t who had a construction company, who after 10 years had $2 million of sales. That's not bad, right? $2 million of sales? Ha, ha, ha. In one year, I took them from $2 million to $10 million in sales. And then they reached $32 million two years later by applying brain glue. You know, and it's funny because I remember I took them from $2 to $10 million in sales. And one of the partners, they loved me. They were really great. But they said, uh, hey, Bond, it was supposed to be $12 million. Because I said, what's the goal? I said, oh, $12 million in sales. It's supposed to be 10, $12 million. I said, shut up. You know, <laughs> they bought each other brand new BMWs. There were three brand their Beamer lovers, BMW lovers. You know, they couldn't believe how much money was rolling in, all because we changed how we described what their business was. In fact, I'll tell you how we did it. So uh, they're at a construction company, 10 years old construction company. So I pulled out a whiteboard, which they hated whiteboards until they saw it. And then they suddenly they realized, hey, this is really good having a whiteboard. Yeah, you know, we could talk to our, you know, our, uh, you know, all our people that work here. Um, so I said, let's make a shopping list of all the different types of clients you've worked with over the past 10 years. Da -da 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 -da. It took a while, about 45 minutes or so. And, you know, oh, well, how about this one? How about this one? Okay, and I started adding all these. I said, let's play a game. Let's pretend you're going to focus just on one type of client and you're not going to work with anybody else. You're going to say no to everybody else. And I said, well, we don't want to do that. We don't want to turn away business. And I said, I understand. But we're playing a game. Okay, a game. <laughs> well, you know, we want a niche. Grab a niche that you can tackle. So they said, okay, and then and it took a few minutes and they finally said, fire restoration for insurance companies. We've only done a couple of them, but we had insurance companies that said, we have a client that had a fire and uh, you know, could you go in and, and fix it? And they said, there are two things that we check. The first thing is we check the frame of the building. If the frame is damaged, you gotta tear down the whole building. But if it's not damaged, then you just you know fix it up and you know make it uh, back to normal. And so they said, we'd love to do fire restoration for an insurance company. So I said, okay, let's think of this for a second. If one of an insurance, an insurance company's client has a fire, what's the trigger word that comes to their mind? And they're going, oh, no, we can't think of it. So think of it. If their client has a fire, what's the first word that comes to mind? And they're going, uh, and one of them says, a fire? I said, yes. Okay. So... What's what's a word, a phrase that goes with fire? A oh, fire extinguisher. Why don't we call you guys the fire extinguisher for insurance companies? You know, you don't put out the fire, but you if there, you have a client that has a fire, call the fire extinguisher. We actually got the website, firex.com. So I went with them to two clients, to two prospects. And we're sitting and talking. And, you know, sometimes you get ideas, but you're embarrassed to share it with a client, even though you go in there with the idea. And so, but we went in there. And then I noticed they're not saying it. So I said, hey, guys, whenever you have a fire, we're your fire extinguisher for insurance companies. Just go fire X. You know, you could always get us. And the clients, the prospects started laughing. You're our fire extinguisher. He said, yeah, we're your fire extinguisher. You know, whenever you have a client that has a fire, call us. And they started laughing and they enjoyed us. And then we left. As we're getting back to the office after the first uh, prospect, uh, our uh, receptionist was saying, we just got a call from the the prospect you were talking about, he was laughing while he said, I need my fire extinguisher. Can you have them call me? <laughs> and, but it's, it just, 
with this little thing, suddenly sales exploded and they went from two to 10 million in sales in one year. They stopped doing uh, construction for anybody else and just doing it for, just focus on fire restoration for insurance companies and their sales exploded, you know? And it's just this whole idea of when you understand certain of the tools of brain glue and how it works and wakes up your brain, but it wakes up the brain of prospects. I mean, let me give you an example with, um, um, so a lot of people love Shark Tank. I love Shark Tank, it's lots of fun. And so there's a mom and her son in Utah who loved Shark Tank and then they came up, she came up with the idea and started talking to her son about the fact that wouldn't it be fun if uh, we, um, you know, could come up with a product and be su somewhat successful and get on Shark Tank. I mean, we, we will become millionaires. This will be really great. Okay. And so they're thinking about it. And she was uh, constipated. And, you know, you need, when you, you decide you want to create a product, you don't just go, okay, here's a product right away. It takes a while. You're going to think about it because you want to have a product that could be good. And that's one thing that's great about Brain Glue is this is for people that don't have a lot of money to compete with people. You can compete with giant companies and often win, even though you have no almost no money because it triggers the brain and wakes up the brain. So the mom and son are thinking, so we need to come up with a product. It took about a month for them to come up with the idea for what their product was going to be. Mom was constipated. And so a doctor told her, you know, if you when you're on the toilet, if you can raise your feet six to eight inches off the floor while you're on the toilet, it changes the shape of your body, and it helps. It makes it easier to go to the bathroom. She started trying it, and it worked. And and then so she's thinking like, wow, this is the product. We should create a little stool that slides under the toilet, and then you can slide it up and put your feet on it. Okay, this would be great. And so they found a manufacturer who would manufacture it for I don't know four bucks a uh, thing or whatever because it's all plastic. And they could sell it for 20 bucks. So they can make really good money. And so they're thinking like, so we need to come up with a name for it. Well, we need a really good name for it. What's a good name for it? And so the first is, uh, it's toilet stool. Okay. My wife said it should have been stool stool, but I don't think that's a good name. Okay. <laughs> but uh, toilet stool. And she goes like, I don't like, that's not a good name, toilet stool, but that's what it is. You always start with logic. Okay. It's a toilet stool. And so they went, like, what are other ways to describe toilet? Uh, potty. And you're kind of squatting when you're on it. Squatty potty. I when knew exactly what it was as soon as you started talking about it because the name sticks with you. That's exactly right. I saw it on Facebook ad, and I, I shot it out to all my friends. I just thought it was hilarious. So listen to how hilarious it is. They generated over a hundred million dollars of sales. This is a mom and son with no business experience. Wow. And within two years or just two, about two and a half years, they generated over a hundred million of sales. They got on Shark Tank and they, they almost all the investors wanted to invest with them also because this was a ticket to print money. So I had an operation about two months ago. I was in a hospital, heart operation, not fun. Okay. And so one of the uh, nurses said to me, uh, so, yeah, so tell me about your life or whatever. I said, oh, I wrote a book called Brain Glue. She said, oh, what's it about? And I told her the story of uh, the squat of the, uh, squatty potty. And she says, I've got to tell you something, okay? I'm a nurse, so I know I've got a little stool that I put my feet up on. And But when I saw squatty potty in a store, I loved the name so much, I ended up buying the product, even though I already have something that does that because it's such a cool name. It's like, what, really? You bought it even though you have something that does that? I said, yeah, Squatty Potty is such a cool name. I'm almost smiling and laughing every time I go to the bathroom because, oh, Squatty Potty time, and, you know. But it's it just, when you, you know, when you come up with a name that resonates, that sticks to the brain like glue, uh, it you have an easier chance of making a ton of money. And as I started researching all the different types of massively successful products and then trying it on companies and sharing it with people. It's just been mind blowing how many people make a fortune, uh, you know, by applying brain glue. And then let me give you one tool of brain glue. Okay. And then I, so Jack and Jill went up the hill. hill. All of us know that, right? I can be on my deathbed and somebody says, hey, James, Jack and Joe went up there and go, hell, the matcha pill of what? You know, the last time I heard it was 10, 20, maybe 50 years ago. I'm old, so maybe even more than 50 years ago. And yet I remember it like it was yesterday because it's rhyme. 
And rhyme is one of the tools that sticks to the brain like glue. And so, and rhyme is used for all kinds of things. You know, in O.J. Simpson's trial, uh, his his uh, attorney Johnny Cochran told the jury just before they went to to uh, to do the evaluation, he said, "Just remember, if the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit." You know, the rhyme. And I remember two of the jurors being interviewed after the trial, and they, and uh, the uh, journalist said, "With all that evidence against O.J., how come you found him not guilty?" And one of them responded, while the other one nodded her head in agreement. And she said, we knew if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. With the glove didn't fit, we had to acquit. You know, rhyme. Wow. <laughs> Which a squatty potty is kind of rhyme, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's also kind of uh, alliteration and repetition of sounds. So, like these are fun tools. That when people start hearing it, they go like, oh, wow. You no know, alliteration is like Coca-Cola, Best Buy. How about I love Lucy? You have TV shows, okay? I love Lucy. La, 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 la. I love Lucy. Okay, there's Mad Men, Breaking Bad, Sex and the City, you know? How about Golden Girls? I love Golden Girls, but you think it's a coincidence that they both use D, the letter G, Golden Girls? You know, I mean, it's amazing. So, yeah, the, when you start to understand these tools, it just really wakes up the brain. So, let's say you were going to invent, let's say you invented a glue. Okay, and you want to come up with a really cool name for the glue. So the first tool is a, is a metaphor, and I'll talk about that. And I'll get, you know I'll show everybody like ways to do this. It's just like what? Okay, so you're making glue, and it's really strong. So how strong is it? Well, it's strong as the Eiffel Tower. I don't know. <laughs> it's strong as uh, you know I don't know. It's as strong as an elephant. Okay, so but then you're going g- gorilla glue. Alliteration means let's find another word that begins with G. G- g- it's gorilla glue. Gorilla glue. Gorilla glue sticks to the brain. I have a lot of friends who are in construction, and they say JB Weld is much much better than gorilla glue. And yet, if you go to a, you know, uh, you go to the store, what you see is a whole column of gorilla glue, gorilla glue, all the different types. And then uh, um, JB Weld has like two samples in it and it's you know it doesn't matter if it's better gorilla glue sticks to the brain like glue in fact it's funny because i was doing an article on it i mean i was talking about it and i suddenly realized i have a i have a gorilla glue (laughs) i have some of that too yeah exactly and it's it because it sticks to the brain like glue (laughs) like gorilla glue that's well you figure if i remember it it must be good yeah and that's we're so So overwhelmed that's the problem. We're so overwhelmed with knowledge and information and advertising and everything else. You need to stand out from the from the crowd. And so Gorilla Glue stands out from the crowd because it uses a tool, Gorilla Glue. Well, two tools because metaphor, it's Gorilla Glue. It's strong as a gorilla. And it's uh, alliteration, a repetition of sound. Good, good, Gorilla Glue. And it creates good visuals with, with popping colors. Yeah, exactly. And the picture of a gorilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's their slogan. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 but there's famous Amos, you know, Wally Amos didn't have a lot of money, uh, but he came up with the type of cookies or small uh, uh, chocolate chip cookies that were delicious and people loved his cookies. And so when he called it famous Amos using rhyme, suddenly it became easy to remember and it stuck to the brain like glue and he sold more than he ever expected. I mean, there are just so many of these tools that when you start applying it, I have this woman who has um, this amazing um, um, uh, cream. She has a farm. Uh, she, her and her family have a farm. And she says, we have this cream, and it works really well, and it goes deep in your joints and helps you with joint pain, okay? And she says a lot of athletes love it, um, a lot of, uh, you know, just a, 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 people in the construction industry love it because they have to carry things all the time and all that. And so we're thinking of uh, something. I said, so she, I said, what does it do? And she says, well, you rub it uh, and it goes deep. So I, we're thinking of it. And one of the names that came up, she's thinking about this. So she's not sure she wants to do it. But I said, rub a dub deep. <laughs> and she goes, rub a dub deep? <laughs> yeah, that'll, people will remember that. Rub. You know, you want to rub yeah. it. Rub a dub deep <laughs> because it goes deep. <laughs> and that's why it tends to work better than a lot of other uh, you know, uh, uh, pain drugs or pain uh, uh, creams that you put on. So, you know, hey, you want to buy Rub-A-Dub Deep? I mean, that's a good name. <laughs> but it just, 
when we start thinking of that, you know, we want to think of something that sticks to the brain like glue. And when you come up with that, suddenly the you know, sales take off, and including people laugh, like uh, Squatty Potty. You know, people laugh, but they buy it. <laughs> Squatty Potty. I <laughs> Squatty Potty. Oh, I got to get one, <laughs> you know. So you gave an example of something that wasn't a product with the OJ trial. What about people who are in the service industry? How would they try to find a name for their business or for for their services? How would that work? Well, and the construction guys that I was talking about were a good example because they didn't want to change the name of their company. So what I did was came up with a slogan, you know, we're the fire extinguisher. Okay, we actually put it on the uh, emails if we sent them or a, a letter that we'd sent them or whatever else. And so, and we would have pictures of us with a fire extinguisher. So it was easy to remember. And so uh, there's a Morton Salt, and Morton Salt is about 100 years old, and yet it, they still dominate the salt industry. They were one of the first salts. Salt used to clump. So if you get salt and you'd use it, it would clump. Well, they were the first salt that didn't clump. And so they decided to come up with a metaphor, actually, uh, for the type of salt they have. And so it pours easily. What else pours? Rain. And so, uh, uh, so Morton Salt has the creative slogan of a little girl with an umbrella and rain coming down. And their slogan is, when it rains, it pours. That has nothing to do with salt. And yet it helped them become a blockbuster of success in the salt industry. When it rains, it pours. And so one of the first things, you know, we want to do is, it's one of our first tools is think of a metaphor and complete the phrase, it's just like, and be as crazy as possible, okay? Uh, so my book, okay? And so uh, one of the tools is uh, trigger words, okay? I mean, would you use the word um, dirty in your product? I have dirty <laughs> consulting. <laughs> and yet we have uh, dirty dancing, Dirty Harry movies, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. You know, they use this because people go like, what? Okay, and it grabs your attention. So it just, when you use it to, so how about naked? Would you use the word naked? Okay, this is Naked Jeans Podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, I have I some really... friends who would use that and have done Naked Podcast. Yeah, well, so I know this guy, uh, David Baer, B-A-E-R, and he and his partner have a consulting company they do for advertisers. And so I'm talking to him and everything else as we're going through this. And then I said, oh, I have the perfect name for you. He said, what? Bare Naked Advertising. I can't even remember the name of his company. Bare Naked Advertising. His partner started laughing hysterically and said, yes. And he said, I don't know if I want the word naked next to my name. Okay, so he never went for it. But Bare Naked Advertising would, would sell. So they have these, uh, these two guys in Southern California. Uh, who uh, were looking at Oddwalla, and Oddwalla is juice, natural juice, owned by Coca-Cola. So they have lots of money, okay? It was the dominant ju uh, natural juice in America. But these guys said, no, we can make a better juice than Oddwalla. But we have to come up with a name that's really good because we don't have a lot of money. We're competing against Coca-Cola, you know? And they got like billions of dollars. And so what would we come up with? And so they started laughing, and they decided, why don't we call it Naked Juice? But they didn't have a lot of courage, so they called it Naked Juice, and they didn't make it very big on the label. And sales started doing really well. So the sales did pretty well, well, very well, actually. And so they hired a graphic artist uh, to redesign the label so they would be consistent with all the, you know, the different products they have. And the, the, the graphic artist said, I want to put the word naked big on the product. You know, I mean, you have it small. It's crazy. We need to make it big so it's naked. And they were kind of embarrassed, but they went, do you think so? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, okay, fine. Sales exploded. They shot past Oddwalla, that's owned by Coca-Cola, to become the largest selling natural juice in America. Naked juice, you know? And so it's a trigger word. So so, um, um, so I work with uh, Warren Buffett's team. They brought me in because I have a background and I'm one of America's leading behavioral management specialists. And uh, he has a great line. He says, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. Okay, it's like, what? What he's basically saying is only when times get tough do you realize who's capable and competent, okay? But if you say that, people go, eh, okay, okay. But by saying, by using the trigger word, 
Only when a tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. It's like, whoa, oh, that's interesting. How do you think of the visual of it? So I could say for my book, you know, my book grabs your attention, just like a naked man running through your backyard. You know, the naked man's running through your backyard. You're going to go, what? <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> grabs your attention. And so naked does that too. When it's just like these, these tools are really great because when people realize so, they're, they're seemingly simple tools, and I'll go to rub it dub deep. You know what I mean, it's just like, what? You, you laugh, but laughers are buyers. I have this joke. I said, sort of one of the things, and humor is one of the uh, tools in brain glue, okay? And uh, it's, it triggers oxytocin in the brain if you can make somebody laugh. And when, they trigger, when you trigger oxytocin, it makes people much more receptive to saying yes to your ideas or buying your product. So I have these three women who are very religious. And I was, was talking to them from a marketing standpoint. And so I figured, oh, well, you're religious. Let me give you this joke, okay? I said, okay, fine. And I said, so a little girl comes up to her mommy and says, mommy, daddy says we came from apes. But you say we came from, from Adam and Eve. Honey, daddy's talking about his family. I'm talking about my family. <laughs> they started laughing hysterically. <laughs> but because they were laughing, they were ready to listen to me. And that's why, you know, I mean, it's nice if you have a slogan that makes people laugh. When it rains, it pours. A lot of people laugh at that uh, for more insult. But it, otherwise, you know, if you make if you make people laugh, it opens their mind so they become much more receptive to buying your product. So I have a TV next to my computer. I almost never turn it on. I don't know why it was on, but it was on. And I'm, you know, I'm doing work on a computer, blah, blah. And they have a Johnny Bench, a famous baseball player. Uh, doing a commercial for Blue Emu, and which is anti-arthritis cream, okay? And I'm not listening to it. I could care less. I'm like, you know, I'm doing work. But then he says, Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. What did he just say? <laughs> and he won't stink? From that moment forward, I was listening and watching, listening to him watching a commercial because he woke up my brain, you know? And, and I was like, huh, oh, and then he said later, yeah, it works fast and you won't stink. But it's like, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> you know, it really it grabs your attention. And that's what you want is you want to grab attention enough that people go, huh? And then they check it out. In fact, there's a really good, <laughs> it's a great, I have a crazy example, but I think, so I want to encourage everyone to think of a metaphor. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a, I think it's really funny, but it helped this guy become massively wealthy. So you, you could think of a metaphor by coming up with the phrase, it's just like my product or idea, whatever it is, it, my service is just like, a, and be as crazy as possible. And then you can come back. You may not use the crazy idea, but it will get you thinking and get your brain going, okay? So this guy, Paul Tran, invented an electric razor for man's private areas. I don't want to get too much into it, but okay. So, and so he wanted to come up with a name that, that would help people understand how the product works, but not, uh, you know, but not uh, offend people. So he's thinking, what's it like? It's like, you know, it's kind of like a lawnmower. Oh, why don't I call it the lawnmower? Okay. He called this company Manscaped. We landscape a man with the lawnmower. Okay. And sales exploded. People are laughing. So I never bought one, but like, let's take you through. The, well, first, I was in, I think, Bed Bath & Beyond or one of these stores, which, by the way, blah, 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 Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, where they come up with the blah, 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 okay? It's like Best Buy and uh, Build-A-Bear, you know? But uh, so I was in a Bed Bath & Beyond, and they had a poster, a big white poster, and it said, the lawnmower had an arrow and it pointed to the electric razor. And there were two people standing there reading the the small print. And I became the third person, like, the lawnmower? What the heck's that? And I started reading the small print. Oh, I mean, don't you want people to read your ads? You ever post an ad or a post? And so we read it. So if so, here's how it works. I, I never bought one, okay? <laughs> if I bought one, I wouldn't share it with friends. Let's start there, okay? <laughs> the lawnmower. But I can see myself calling a friend and saying, hey, just, hey Joe, that's what I just bought. What, the lawnmower? Oh, you need to mow your lawn? No, it's for men's private areas. I could hear him start laughing and say, hey, Mary, his wife, check, guess what James just bought? What, the lawnmower? Well, you got to mow his lawn? No, it's for shaving his private areas. And it's and you're laughing and they're laughing and they're going to share, hey, guess what James just bought, you know? But it just, it spreads like wildfire. It becomes viral. 
And so with a lot of names of products like uh, Squatty Potty, it becomes viral because, you know, you want people to wake up and go, whoa, and notice it. And then you want people to be interested enough that they buy it. And then you want people to be uh, happy enough that they share it with other people or share what they did with other people. That's why I'll go back to bare naked advertising. I can't for the life of me, I honestly can't remember the name of this company. But I, I talk to people all the time. I say, so Bear, so David Bear, what's the name of his company? He said, it should be Bear Naked Advertising. They would remember. Now, David, David Bear is awesome, so I'm not saying anything negative about him. But I'm just saying, you know, we want to remember that we're so overwhelmed, especially because we walk around with our phones. I mean, it's a computer that's connected. We're, you know, we're so overwhelmed with, uh, with content on a regular basis that we need to find a way to stand out from the crowd. If you don't stand out from the crowd, you'll struggle. And this is the thing, and I'm talking to everybody out there. If you have a crappy product or service, you know, you'll never be successful. But most of us have really good products or really good services, but we struggle. And we don't have to struggle, okay? But we struggle. So let me give you a, a mistake that people make that I made, okay? <laughs> so... um as I got into the trigger words, I was reading, I was learning about Carrie Smith. And Carrie Smith has, um, uh, he was uh, started a small manufacturing company and made some pretty good money. So a friend of his said, do you want to buy my fan company? I make really big fans. He said, oh yeah, sure. That'll be great. So he decided to call the company um, H, uh, HVLS fans, HVLS fans for high volume, low speed fans. It's us logical people, okay? Uh, and he sold a few fans. Uh, they were really big fans, the kind of fan you'd use in a barn. So if you, if you have horses or cows, you're not going to use air conditioning. You know, you're going to use a fan. And so he would sell uh, those things, and he sold pretty well. But one day he was talking to a friend, and he said, these are really big fans. He said, what do you mean big fans? They're, they're big-ass fans. And his friend goes, oh, big-ass fans. Why don't you call that your, your company then? And he goes, hmm. So he ran an ad, and instead of calling it... Uh, High volume, low speed fans, HVLS fans. He said, why don't I call it big ass fans in the end and see what happens? And sales exploded. So he said, I got to change the name of the company, you know, the big ass fans. In fact, one of the things that happened was sales exploded so much. He said he started offering other products, but then he realized they're distracting him from focusing on fans. He stopped selling them and just focused on fans. After 15 years, he sold his company with a lot of us, you know, eventually, you know, before you retire, you want to sell your company. He was young, by the way. He sold his company after 15 years. Guess how much he sold it for? $500 million. He wow. started from virtually nothing, and he sold this thing for $500 million, mostly because he came up with the craziest name on the planet, Big Ass Fans. But so I, I'm learning about him and Carrie Smith. And I'm going, ass. Okay, so when I, I had just written the book. And so I said, so I should put ass in my title. So I called it um, Dump Your half ass Marketing Strategy. And it started selling really well. I started getting lots of reviews on Amazon. You want to get over 100 reviews if you're selling a book because then Amazon will help promote book, the book. So I think I was up to 80 reviews. And then Amazon said, we're not going to allow you to advertise on Amazon anymore because you have a swear word in your word, ass. And we don't like that anymore, so we're not uh, allowing you to do that. So I begged them. I said, please, let me, if I, I'll change the title, but I want to keep all the, um, you know, the uh, reviews that I have. And they said, okay, you can change it once, but that's it, okay? Because we don't allow anybody to change it and keep the reviews, but we'll let you do it because, yeah, you're changing the, the title because of us. So me, like, like very common, like most of us, I'm a logical person. So instead of brain glow, I called it sell your, right, uh, um, sell your right brain marketing strategy, okay? That's logical. Okay, and so I changed it to that, and da, 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 and people like the book and everything else. So I met Jack. Uh, I met uh, uh, Jack Canfield who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. He sold 500 million books, by the way. Chicken Soup for the Soul books. He has over 60 bestsellers and everything. Well, he fell in love with my book, and he was a friend of mine. Put my book on on a pile of books of his that he was reviewing, and he started looking at the book, and he he told me, "I am so pissed off at you." I said, "I'm sorry." And he said, "I picked up your damn book. I couldn't put it down." It's like, you know, I'm so sorry. Can I get that as a review? You know, he said, 
on um, I'm buying copies for everybody in my company. I want everybody to read this so they know how to do the brain glue. Okay, but you got to change the title of your book. And do you know the whole book is about brain glue? You're teaching us not to do logic, but to sell emotionally. And you've got a logical title. Sell more is the right brain marketing strategy. We can't even remember the, the title of your book. It's so long. It's like I can't I can't remember the title of your book. And you're James Bond. I can't find you because I got Sean Connery all over Amazon. So I can't even you know, promote you in the book, but, you know, promote you to my friends, but you've got to change the title to brain glue. The whole book is about brain glue, you know, and it's a brain glue is an emotional, whereas sell more with the right brain marketing strategy is logical. And you're trying to teach us to be emotional selling. And I was like, oh, do I have to? He said, yes, I'm glad he got me to do it because the whole book is brain glue. But it just, we have to remember that we'll often come up with a logical title and that's good. Don't turn yourself off, you know, come up with a logical title, you know, like the toilet stool, it's a logical title. It's a toilet stool. Okay. And then you go, but that name doesn't really work, but at least we know it's a toilet stool. And then you can think, well, what's another word for toilet? Potty. Hmm. And then you're squatting squatty potty, you know, uh, brain glue. It's the same thing. It's like when you start to realize like what's an emotional term for um, an emotional way to come up with a name or a slogan. I mean, I'll go back to um, the slogan, uh, when it rains, it pours. That's for salt when it rains, it pours. And yet we can all relate, even though it's such a bizarre thing to say with a girl with an umbrella when it rains, it pours. But it's talking about pouring. And it's just because they recognize it pours smoothly. And so what else pours smoothly? Rain. So why don't we make it just, just like, and then complete it's just like a rainstorm, you know? It rains when it rains, it pours. And they came up with a slogan that just like dominated. I mean, it's fun. It's, 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 Ray Glue is fun. But people start having fun with their products because more fun with their products because they come up with names often that, and they come back to me and share with me. And they act, actually, I have to say this. A lot of people use it and I've helped a lot of people. I've helped hundreds of people because I do work with the U.S. Small Business Administration, volunteer work where I teach people this. And a lot, a lot of people tell me, please don't tell anybody, don't tell others what I do because I don't want my competitors to know what I do because they'll start competing with me. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, yeah. I have to tell you, I didn't know the background on the Morton Salt thing. I just never could figure out, and this was from a kid's perspective, but it, it stayed with me. I never could figure out how come if it was raining, people wanted to eat more salt. That's, I, couldn't, I didn't get the whole idea. It makes perfect sense when you give the backstory, but I'm like, there's a kid in the rain and they want to pour more salt. I don't, yeah, I didn't get the logic. Right, I was looking for a lot of. It isn't logic. It's it's emotion. Yeah, yeah. but obviously it made sense to the adults doing the purchasing. But from a kid's point of view, because I was a kid and I related to the girl with the umbrella playing in the rain, and I'm like, oh yeah. So am I supposed to get more salt out for the slugs? What? Are... <laughs> you know, the, the interesting um, leaps in logic we make when we're children and when we don't totally understand how the world works, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But but metaphors stick to the brain. And I'll go back to Mars, Mars from Venus. You know, what a cra that's a crazy title. And yet it's it resonates with us. I was in a bookstore and I'm going, oh, 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 oh Mars, Mars, Mars from Venus. And I'm like, Mars, Mars from Venus? What the heck is that? And I picked it up, which is, <laughs> if people pick it up, there's a good chance they're gonna buy it. I started looking through, I said, wow, this is really good. You know, and so there's a woman who has, uh, who spends zero on advertising on social media on Facebook, and she has more than five million fans. Wow, five million fans without spending a dime. Wow. So she's decided she wants to create a Facebook page. By the way, she wasn't selling anything initially, but eventually she realized I have so many people. So now she's selling stuff. Um, but she said, "So I want to create a page, and I'm a mommy. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And so, what does mommy need? Mommy needs." Time to herself. Mommy needs a rest. Oh, does mommy ever need a rest? I know what mommy needs. Mommy needs vodka. <laughs> she created a page. Mommy needs vodka. So I and she has good posts. But we have how many people have good posts? But no, you know, you don't have five million fans for free. Yeah. So I remember I must have a friend who was like, you know, a lot who's a fan of hers, and so he share a post with me. I'm looking at the post and I was like, oh yeah, this is really funny. It's by mommy needs vodka. What? Of course, I clicked on it. Like I guess five million people did. Went to her page. I loved some of the posts that she has on her page, and I became a fan. I wanted the five million and two hundred thousand fans. 
but it just, you know, it woke up the brain. And I think that's what we want to do more than anything else. Last story. Can I give you this just to share this last story? Yeah, they're interesting. (laughs) So how would you love to invent a product and have a competitor steal it from you and make a fortune while you starve to death? Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. No. (laughs) Okay. It happens though. Yeah. Let me give you a perfect example. I think everybody's going to relate to this. I described this. You're going to know who I'm talking about when I talk about the the guy that actually invented it. Okay. Because you're going to go, why did he call it that? So Post Cereals competes with Kellogg's. And uh, the head of Post Cereals was thinking, you know, we, you know, we have so much trouble competing with Kellogg's and cereals and everything else. Well, let's come up with a totally different type of product. They said, why don't we come up with this little cake that you can put, you will put the strawberry, blueberry, raspberry inside. It'd be really fun. We put it in a toaster. You know what it is. When it comes up under the toaster, um, they have a nice warm cake that they could eat anytime. It'd be fantastic. And why don't we call it Country Squares? Okay. Three months before they launched it, they were so excited that he promoted it to the media. We have this new product that's been in about three months. Is gonna We're going to launch the product. And it's Country Squares. Look at this product. Isn't this great? Oh, I, and people are excited about it. Of course, the head of Kellogg's was excited about it and said, oh, no, no, no. look at that. Guys, guys, come here. You know, all the people and the guys and girls, you know, who work for him. We need to figure out, I need you guys to figure out how to make that product, okay? We need to make exactly that product that goes in a toaster, okay? But we need to come up with a better name. And so he used two brain glue tools, okay? He didn't know it was brain glue back then, but he knew this, okay? This is inside him. So the first thing is it pops out of the toaster. So we should have the word pop, okay? Pop, because it pops out of the toaster. That's something called a sense elevation. It's like a smells like teen spirit. Kurt Cobain wrote a song, smells like teen spirit, you know? And smells, woo, what does teen spirit smell like? Blech, you know? But it, it sticks to the brain. But so pop, it pops out of the toaster, okay? So that's a natural sound. And then back then there was, um, um, what was his name? Uh, Andy Warhol who was a famous pop artist, pop art, okay? And so he said, pop art, pop tart. Why don't we call it pop tarts, okay? Anchoring, that's anchoring is a term he he used. It's like if you're creating a dandruff shampoo, uh, so it's the head and shoulders. So what's a song, what's something that everybody knows? Head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes, ears, mouth, and nose, you know, for kids. Why don't we call it head and shoulders? So in his case, he called it pop tarts. Pop-Tart sales exploded. They launched it, of course, one week before Pop- before Country Squares came out, of course. Okay. <laughs> Tell us when you're launching it. So we know, guys, one week before we're going to launch it, it sold out like gangbusters. It was the biggest selling product they've ever invented. They couldn't even believe it was selling so much. Nobody was buying Country Squares. They ran out of Pop-Tarts. So he ran actually apology ads in newspapers saying, I am so sorry we ran out of it, but just hold on for a couple of days and we'll get more. We didn't realize how many people are going to love Pop-Tarts, okay? After a few months, so I was uh, reading this article uh, just recently, and it said last year they sold more than 3 billion Pop-Tarts, okay? Country Squares, does it exist? No, after a few months they stopped selling it because nobody was buying Country Squares and Pop-Tarts was selling, 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 all because of the name. All because of the name. They had a better name. And that's why what you want to do is you want to, you know, if we're competing, and I'll go back to Naked Juice compared to Odwalla, okay? Naked Juice had a better name. Coca-Cola owned Wada Odwalla. Naked Juice shot right past Odwalla. And they're the two guys that have never sold anything before. But they figured, you know, we got we could definitely create this juice that's all natural and better than uh, when people understand brain glue, you start to understand that you don't need a lot of money, but you could actually do really well and actually make make a lot of money and even compete with big companies if you have a good name or a good slogan. And I think that's why so many people are, you know, finding this valuable. It's one of those things that it's so basic. You know, we we do rhymes for little kids. And, uh, you know, we don't realize, why don't we do rhymes for adults? You know, I'll go back to O.J. Simpson's trial. If the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit. Hey, rhyme works. It worked on the jury, <laughs> you know? So, uh, but yeah, just these tools are really powerful. So I just, to wrap up, I have, uh, um, a, there are two things. First is, if you go to yesbrainglue.com, you'll get lots of information on brain glue. I mean, hopefully you'll get the book, but even if you don't, that's fine. But yesbrainglue.com at least gives you a lot of, you know, interesting things about brain glue. But for your whole audience, 
I want to suggest you try this, okay? And that is come up with a metaphor and do it this way. My product or service is just like what? And be as crazy as possible. Start that way, okay? Like my book is so great. It's like a naked man running through your backyard. I don't use it all the time, but you get like, what? <laughs> okay. But just, you know, come up with the craziest uh, idea first. My product or service is just like what? And be as crazy as possible. We had a behavioral management firm and it took us a long time to explain because we, we had fantastic results. We would actually help people achieve bigger goals than they could achieve on their own. But as we would explain it to people, they didn't understand it. But then we realized, you know, personal trainer gets you to do more push-ups you can do on your own. Come on, Gene, four more push-ups, three more. I was like, oh, do I have to? You know, and, but it, well, we do the same thing. When we said a personal trainer gets you to do more push-ups than you could do on your own, we get you and your key people to tackle bigger projects you could do on your own. So they went, oh, it makes sense, you know, because it's a metaphor. And so my product or service is just like what? And have fun with it, okay? If, start there. And often that will help you to come up with um, a, a name or a tool or a way to describe it. You know, our our salt is just like rain, it, when it rains, it pours, like you were saying, you know? It's just like, what? No, no, I got to check this out. It wakes up the brain. It triggers different parts of the brain and it wakes up the brain. So the brain goes, oh, let me figure that out, you know, uh, you know, and, and when it does that, you have a better chance of making a, a ton of money and having fun with it as well. So, yeah, yes, brainglue.com will really help you guys. Cool. Yeah, we're running out of our time together, but um, you've given this, <laughs> my brain is like spinning. Because I have different parts of my business that target different things, right? And I'm like, okay, so I don't know how I would do that one. But for this one, I have an idea. <laughs> and it's a crazy one, so I have to work through that. So that's really cool. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And yes, I will get your book and go through that too. But um, yeah. So you've given us your website. Any final thoughts for our listeners? Well, just have fun. I mean, life is short. And uh, life does not suck. You're not getting a t-shirt, life sucks, and then you die, okay? Life is wonderful. And uh, Braingle helps you to have more fun with what you do. And that's one of the wonderful things about uh, one of the tools about Braingle is la laughers are buyers. You don't have to get them laughing, but you want to have fun. And, uh, you know, that's why I start with a metaphor. My product or service is just like what, but have fun with what you come up with first. You might bring it down, but remember, the electric razor is called the lawnmower. Who calls an electric razor a lawnmower? And yet he's selling like hundreds of millions of dollars worth of product. You can't believe how much money he's making. And that's why you can have a lot of, a lot of fun too. So that's our goal with all this is that you have fun with your life. And Brain Glue hopefully will help you. But start with the metaphor. My product or service is just like what? And have fun with it. Well, yes, Brain Glue. Yeah, so thanks for being here. I really enjoyed our time together. And if if you want to just click on the link below in the show notes, it'll take you right to him. Um, thank you for being here. Oh, Gene, thank you for having me. Love your show. Your show is awesome and it's addictive. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much. And to the listeners, thanks for tuning in again. Well, another episode will drop next Tuesday for you. But this is your host, Gene Border, with another episode of the Focus Practical Dreamer's Journey. Until next time. We trust you enjoyed this episode of the Focus Practical Dreamer's Journey podcast. Energy work to better your business. Hosted by energy healer, Gene Border. Remember to visit our website at www.focuspracticaldreamer.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey.